Good morning and welcome to AM Joy. Well, you may remember that, you know, Donald Trump, he tried, he tried to walk back his sycophancy to Vladimir Putin in Helsinki. However, he is at it again, apparently siding with Putin over American troops. Trump is now denying that he was ever briefed on intelligence that, as reported by the New York Times, the Kremlin has been secretly offering bounties to Taliban-linked militants to kill U.S. troops in Afghanistan. The Times reported that Trump and the White House National Security Council were briefed in late March and that Trump took no action to retaliate or to prevent Russia from targeting U.S. soldiers in Afghanistan. In a statement, the White House did not confirm or deny Russia's actions. But it did refute Trump's knowledge of any such allegation. Trump himself is tweeting this morning that he knew nothing of the claims and yet still has nothing to say to his pal, old Vladimir Putin, who again is accused of offering bounties for the lives of Americans. On Saturday, the New York Times responded to the White House reporting that one official said the intelligence was briefed at the highest levels and another said it was in the president's daily brief. Perhaps most damning of all, quote, American officials reached on Saturday said it strained credulity to think that White House national security officials would be discussing such an important matter for months and even brief British officials about it and never provide the information to Mr. Trump. As Nancy Pelosi has so succinctly put it when it comes to Trump, all roads lead to Putin. Joining me now is Michael McFaul, former U.S. ambassador to Russia, Malcolm Nance, the author of The Plot to Betray America, Jennifer Rubin, opinion writer for The Washington Post, and Charlie Savage, Washington correspondent for The New York Times, and one of the reporters who broke this huge story. He's also the author of Power Wars. And Charlie, I'm going to start with you. I just want to reiterate for our audience. Kaylee McEnany issued a statement, and here is what it said. The United States receives thousands of intelligence reports a day and they're subject to strict scrutiny. While the White House does not routinely comment on alleged intelligence or internal deliberations, the CIA director, national security advisor, and the chief of staff can all confirm that neither the president nor the vice president were briefed on the alleged Russian bounty intelligence. This does not speak to the merit of the alleged intelligence, but the inaccuracy of the New York Times story erroneously suggested he was briefed on the matter. It, 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 it doesn't, it, that does not seem credible, I'm sorry, I think to most thinking people that something of this importance would not be told to the U.S. commander-in-chief, that the soldiers under essentially his command, while he is, though he's a civilian, he's the top civilian that's in charge of the army and in charge of the military, would not be told that a, 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 another country, a hostile foreign country, is offering bounties. I want you to reiterate from your reporting. What did Trump know and when did he know it? Absolutely. So the first thing I think that's important to notice about that statement is they're not denying that there was an intelligent assessment that the, that the Russian government had offered bounties to Afghan militants and criminals to kill Americans and had paid out such bounties. They're not denying that. They're also not denying that the White House has known about this since at least March and convened an interagency uh, meeting about it, even with the National Security Council uh, in March. And so they and they also have not tried to push back on that. They're saying, well, Trump wasn't briefed. And we don't know if they're using the word briefed in some kind of highly specialized way, like maybe uh, it was in his PDB presidential daily brief document, but he didn't read it. And then the guy who comes in every few days to tell him about what's in the document that he didn't read, didn't mention it that day or something. We just don't know what to make of that statement. The other thing that's weird about that statement is it suggests the way Kaylee McEnany uh, uh, described it was, well, the U.S. government receives reports, thousands of reports a day, as if this was a tip that came in from outside the government <laughs> when this was an assessment report developed by this government. It's not just something randomly that uh, showed up on the stoop one day. So having pointed right. both of those things out, all I can say is that we have a source who said that this was briefed at the highest levels of the White House. And we have a second source who says it was in the written presidential daily brief document. And that's what we have uh, okay. contra their uh, statement to the contrary. And I'm and, and, uh, sorry, but not reading your presidential daily brief, that's not an excuse. It's his job to read the presidential daily brief. If he doesn't feel like it, we don't care. But that doesn't matter. Uh, the director of national intelligence, John Ratcliffe, has also come out and disputed your reporting, sir. Uh, I have confirmed. He says that neither the president or the vice president were ever briefed on any intelligence alleged by the New York Times in its reporting yesterday. The White House statement addressing the issue earlier today, which denied such a briefing occurred, was accurate. Um, it, he goes on and on and on. Uh, the, the reality, again, and I just I'm put another fine point on it. 
In your reporting, how early was this briefed to the highest levels in the White House, meaning not just Donald Trump, not just likely Mike Pence, not just people at the senior levels of his administration. What is his national security advisor up to? When were they briefed on this? We believe that the uh, it was in the PDB, written PDB, some time ago, and we know that, as in, you know, not like this week, and we know that the in late March, the National Security Council convened an interagency meeting specifically about this problem and what to do about it, uh, but that since then no action has been taken. And I also, uh, you and know, so that's what we know at this mm -hmm. point. We're continuing to dig. Yep. And do you know, in your reporting, how many times has Donald Trump spoken to Vladimir Putin between March of this year and this and this month? So as, as we discussed yesterday, Joy, there was, I guess, a call at the beginning of this month uh, between the two of them. Whether there's been more, I can't say. Okay. So let, let's uh, broaden this out. Uh, Michael McFaul, is it at all credible to you that the President of the United States, that the Vice President, that the top levels of his government, the National Security Advisor, would not be fully briefed on Russia offering money, bounties, to Taliban members to kill U.S. troops? No. Uh, it's ex if it is, we'll get to if it is, how shocking that is, too. But I worked three years at the National Security Council, right? I wasn't just the U.S. ambassador in Russia. I worked there. I did those briefings. I was the person that briefed uh, President Obama about all things Russian. And it is just crazy to think that I would have gotten a piece of information like that and not communicated it to the president. That's number one. Number two, if there were these NSC meetings, as Charlie just reported, how could the national security advisor who's supposed to advise the president on national security matters every day, not bring it up. That does not seem credible to me. Three, I would just remind you that our fact, the fact checkers over at the Washington Post, in their book, the introduction starts with 16,000 falsehoods, I believe. So uh, against the backdrop of that, why should anybody give them the benefit of the doubt that this is true? But finally, I want to really stress this point. If it is true, that is also incredibly shocking. First of all, as Charlie just said, they have not denied that this happened. This, this intelligence is not true. They had every chance to do it in all those statements, Joy. It never says that, right? So think about that. They have yep. this incredibly shocking information that they're not giving to the president, all the while while the president, one, is calling Vladimir Putin. That's a great point. When I got those packages ready for call packages to call Putin or Medvedev, intelligence like this was always in the call package. And two, he made some pretty big decisions. He's, he's made a decision to invite Vladimir Putin to the G8 summit. He's made a decision to pull troops out of Germany. Surely in a conversation about those major policy decisions, somebody, oh, I hope the national security advisor would say, well, hey, Mr. President, we have this intelligence that might want, might inform that decision. So the product, no, the alibi is just as bad as the alleged thing that they did wrong in the first place. And then finally, I'm sorry to go on about this, but finally, if it is true and they haven't denied this intelligence, why hasn't any senior Trump administration official uh, denounced it? Why haven't they said anything to say this is outrageous behavior where there will be consequences to the Russian government? They haven't done that either. It's a very strange set of circumstances. And every which way you turn it, they seem like they're really dropping the ball when it comes to the security of American soldiers fighting for our country in Afghanistan. Yep, and Russia, 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 back in again. Just to back up what uh, you just heard uh, Ambassador McFaul say, Trump has now actually postponed uh, the summit, the uh, the G7 summit, um, and his calls for Russia to attend it. Um, this was from May 30th. So, again, it points to whether or not he can deny having received this briefing, because why on May 30 did Trump suddenly postpone his decision to try to make the G7 back into the G8 and invite Russia? That's one note. Trump has, by the way, confirmed, however, per the Washington Post, their plan to cut U.S. troops, our troops in Germany. Um, some probably will relocate to Poland, is reported by the Post. This is from June 24th, also after he report allegedly received this briefing. Quote, in Trump's view, the basing arrangements are free military power for Germany, but in the traditional U.S. military view, they are ex there are inexpensive launch points to project U.S. power against a potential, here we come, Russian threat. 
but also to the volatile Middle East and Afghanistan. Malcolm Nance, we know that 20 U.S. service members have been killed by hostile forces uh, in, Af uh, in Afghanistan thus far. What do you make of this blockbuster reporting, which I have to note, NBC is not referring, NBC News is not confirmed, so I need to note that. This is the reporting from the New York Times. What do you make of this reporting and Donald Trump's response? Well, let me give you the perspective of a field intelligence collector who would have been the kind of person that would have gotten this information, fused this information, vetted this information, gone back and used either multi-source, multi-dimensional intelligence to build out a picture as to whether this was true. Here is something we do know. For the last three years, there have been reports that Russian intelligence through the GRU, which is Russian military intelligence, the SVR, Russian clandestine service, and using their pri uh, private military contractors, PMC Wagner, have been operating somewhere in and around Afghanistan and have been supplying weapons to the Taliban. That, report, that reporting has been around for three years now. That this would have led to bounties that have been offered on U.S. service member is not out of the ordinary. You have to remember, we actually destroyed 250 Russian mercenaries that attempted to take a U.S. Uh, oil field in Syria that was backed by U.S. special forces. So they're not against using force against us. But let me tell you this. The stick... The statements by Kayleigh McEnany, the press secretary, uh, Ratcliffe, the DNI, and now coming out of Donald Trump himself, I can tell you personally that these are lies. There is a special reporting communication system that we have set aside for very imminent, very critical threat intelligence when it is recognized and identified, which gets these reports to the desk of the president or into the president's hands 24-7, 365, in no more than 10 minutes for the initial report. Then it is followed up by subsequent reporting. Any report that they have confirmed or have intelligence that has been vetted and found to have been credible that there was a bounty placed by the nation of Russia through its secret services on a U.S. service member would have been in his hands in 10 minutes. I, don't, I have actually generated reports like this. These reports are not normal. When they, they, This all stemmed from the Cuban Missile Crisis, where people said they didn't have the intelligence. Whether Donald Trump read these reports, whether people withheld the reports, Every aspect of their response is a failure and is fundamentally based on a lie. They are dancing around the word briefed, and we have lost 20 service members in Afghanistan. That's five Benghazis, according to the way that they count. So these, what we need to do is we need to determine through other sources, whether it's the House Intelligence Committee, the Senate Intelligence Committee, to determine whether this type of critical communication went through that network or whether this was, you know, some sort of reporting that came from another source and that was brought into the PDB or not. They are dancing around the word briefing and it is disgraceful. Whether it happened or didn't happen should have been confirmed before this report went to the New York Times. And if they're denying it, then they're either incompetent idiots or they're liars. Both can be true. And, uh, and, and I want to I bring Jennifer I into this, and I want to first correct myself that NBC News has confirmed uh, this reporting uh, that's in the New York Times, not hasn't, but has. Uh, so that's also important to note. Uh, but I want to, Jennifer, the, you know, you expect a certain response from the hawks in the Republican Party. There would have been a reflexive response. Imagine if this same reporting had dropped when, pre when the president's name was Barack Obama. Just the apoplexy that you would have heard from Republicans. Um, instead, it's been quite mild, um, I have to say, so far. But I want to first play what Joe Biden, uh, who is running for president right now, former vice president of the United States, this was his response yesterday. There is no bottom to the depth of Vladimir Putin and the Kremlin's depravity, if that's true. Not only has he failed to sanction or impose any kind of consequences on Russia for this egregious violation of international law, Donald Trump has continued his embarrassing campaign of deference and debasing himself before Vladimir Putin. It's a betrayal of every single American family with a loved one serving in Afghanistan or anywhere overseas. And I'm quite frankly outraged by the report. And if I'm elected president, make no mistake about it, Vladimir Putin will be confronted and will impose serious cost on Russia. 
Korea. There is the, 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 the promise to confront Putin. That is from Vice President Biden. I want you to hear, uh, listen to Congresswoman Madeleine Dean, who was on this program yesterday when we told her and, and, and talked to her about this reporting. Here is what Congresswoman, Democratic Congresswoman Dean said. It is chilling. It is sickening. Uh, it is, and it, it's shocking, but maybe it shouldn't be. This is how rotten to the core this president is. He doesn't seem to have any compassion or understanding. He doesn't seem to really love this country. He doesn't seem to really understand our constitution. He, he certainly uh, curries favor with our enemies and disrespects and disregards uh, our allies and our friends. And now here is one Lindsey Graham, super hawk, responding to the same exact news. He says, it is imperative that Congress get to the bottom of recent media reports that Russian GRU units in Afghanistan have offered to pay the Taliban to kill American soldiers with the goal of pushing America out of the region. I expect the Trump administration to take such allegations seriously and inform Congress immediately as to, <laughs> here we go, the reliability of these news reports. It's rather mild, Jennifer. Good grief. Um, first of all, uh, Joe Biden is exactly correct. This is an outrage. And what we have seen happen, whatever the explanation, is that this has not been addressed. Vladimir Putin has done this, and the United States has been passive. It sends a signal not only to him, but now that it's in the public domain, every other enemy, you can take pot shots at American military forces, and you'll have no consequences. In fact, the president of the United States will maybe suck up to your leaders. So it is the absence of any action, which is almost um, unbelievable, uh, and I do share the outrage and consternation. There's two other points. One is, at least for the uh, last year or so, we have had a shuffling of the deck throughout the intelligence agency. How many DNIs have we had? I've lost track. So it is not inconceivable, particularly when you have incompetent, highly political people in these spots, that they choose not to share some information. There is a quantum of possibility that that, in fact, occurred because you have people like Rick Grinnell and you have people like Radcliffe in these positions. And these people are political hacks. They are not trained intelligence uh, people. They don't have a background. They don't have expertise. They are there to facilitate. Donald Trump's political agenda. And I would add one additional point. You are exactly right. Where are the Tom Cottons of the world? Where are the Lindsey Grahams? That response sounds like um, there was some dispute about fishing in, you know, international waters or something, you know, relatively minor, picayune. Um, there is no level of um, reaction. And where are these people hiding? Where is Ted Cruz? Where is um, the whole battery of people who spent years investigating Benghazi? Um, it is really stunning. And it is not only Donald Trump, um, and I agree with a congresswoman who has shown no loyalty to the United States, no awareness of the job, has betrayed our troops. But the same can be said of the entire congressional delegation of Republicans. Their quietude is, in essence, uh, kind of a shrug of the shoulders. Well, the president didn't do anything. Yeah, move on. Um, so in many respects, it is just stunning. But I come back to the central point, and that is that we have not responded. Donald Trump hasn't responded. Um, our military hasn't responded. And as a result, Donald, Trump, Donald uh, Trump has once more laid down at the feet of Vladimir Putin. Yeah, and Charlie, to that very point, have you received, um, when as this reporting has dropped, uh, commentary, outrage, uh, you know, from Republican members of Congress saying this is an outrage, saying something similar to what Madeleine Dean said, what Joe Biden has said. Do you have any comments like that? Uh, the most I... The most I've seen is the pair of tweets from Lindsey Graham that you showed on the screen a few minutes ago, uh, saying this needs to be taken seriously. These sort of allegations need to be taken seriously. Let us know, White House, what's up with that. It's, I, I agree that uh, even as the Democratic Party has uh, really jumped on this, expressed a lot of outrage, uh, the Republican Party leadership has been very quiet to date. 
Very interesting. Uh, Ambassador Michael McFall, Malcolm Nance, Charlie Savage, thank you all very much.